Hey, this is Adam Wells from Prime Racing Team, and I'm up next on Quad Radio. Hello and welcome back to Quad Radio as we get set to roll into fall 2019 here on the, the voice of the ATV Racing Nation. I'm Rodney Tomlin and of course today my guest is Adam Wells and we got a lot to talk about with Adam. I uh, got some pretty cool things going on there of course and before we get in with that there are a few folks that I do want to send a special shout out to including our good friends at DP Brakes. Remember what's stopping you? That's the big question. And uh, right now is that time of the season, silly season, where you need to email uh, Larry Mills over DP Brakes and find out how you can get the best uh, stopping power available on the market, as well as the many other great uh, products that DP brings to you, including their clutches and so forth. Uh, check them out. And, of course, uh, don't forget to always mention Quad Radio whenever you have that opportunity. also want to welcome aboard a uh, brand-new sponsor, and uh, they've been a major supporter of uh, – of racing for quite some time in this individual in particular john coffee from amsoil the first in synthetics he is a uh, local uh, dealer i guess you could say he's out of the uh, uh, south carolina region and of course uh, just to give you an idea everybody likes to save money right well uh did you know that you can save up to 25 percent and receive free shipping on great amsoil products with uh, preferred customer programs uh, they also have special pricing arrangement and free shipping for commercial accounts such as trucking companies loggers and landscapers and businesses like that or if you have a business where you would like to begin selling amsoil products you uh, can qualify to participate in their retail account program and of course uh, become an independent amsoil dealer yourself and build and grow your own profitable business uh, this message comes to you from john coffee your full service amsoil dealer and if any of those opportunities interest you in any way shape or form please give him a call 877-694 Four seven six three, and say thanks to John Amsoil, uh, a, a dealer network that is unbelievable, no doubt about it. But uh, John is also uh, very savvy in the uh, racing world. He goes to a lot of the GNCC races, and uh, uh, of course, he's always there. He knows the racing mind, he knows the racing heart, and he's uh, out to uh, definitely help you get the best deal on your product. And I do want to say thanks to uh, uh, John Coffee, uh, independent Amsoil dealer, for uh, supporting. Uh, quad radio also uh, i want to take this opportunity to say thanks to 88 live to ride racing toward rider safety our good friends at uh, root river racing and of course uh, don't forget about walker fowler racing want to say congratulations to walker fowler on what was that his fifth championship i think he just wrapped up here recently and of course bnr motorsports uh, out of uh, Ohio there. I want to say thanks to the boys up there for being a great support. And of course, our uh, t-shirt designers and providers, JSR Moto Designs. Uh, be sure and check them out for any of uh, your uh, products that you need to dress up your pits, shirts, hats, whatever the case may be. They also uh, do uh, n uh, customized Nerf bars. Uh, the, the webbing in the Nerf bars. Uh, uh, you want to grab uh, those. Uh, those are uh, basically being used by top tier level riders all across the world. Uh, they're going everywhere. So uh, get on board with uh, JSR Moto Designs and get on board with this fellow right here, Mr. Uh, Adam Wells, as we say hello and welcome to Adam. Adam, I'm sorry it took so long to get through all that. It's been a while since we've been on Quad Radio. And I do want to take this opportunity to apologize to the uh, Quad Radio audience, but uh, man, it's been a uh, quite a bit of a, uh, a season, <laughs> if you will. Uh, a lot of things on the uh, personal level that have slowed me down a little bit, but we're back up and ready to uh, to move forward as far as Quad Radio. And I think the silly season right now might be as good a time as any to pick things back up uh, during the racing season. I think everybody knows what's going on. They keep up to date with it for the most part, but now it's whenever the information starts to be kind of uh, faint. But um, uh, anyway, we are going to try to provide as much as that as the uh, off season approaches for GNCC. And we roll through the off season in the ATV motocross racing world. And we prepare at the same time for the 2020 season. And Adam, uh, I know you're one of those folks that, uh, having a, 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 a fun 
2019 season, so to speak. Uh, but that got cut a little bit short. So all your plans, all your efforts are looking towards 2020, which we'll talk about in just a few moments and some great opportunities. I want people that are inexperienced, never been to a, an off-road race, thinking about it, maybe dabbled in it, a novice level rider, introductory level. I want you to stick around. I want you to listen to everything Adam has to say because he's got some pretty important messages coming up for you. But first and foremost, Adam, uh, I think we should introduce you and let folks know who you are and what you're all about. Um, first and foremost, I will let everybody know you are an extreme ATV enthusiast. Uh, you love uh, racing. It's something that uh, you've gotten into, and you're at a point in your life where uh, uh, opportunities are available for you to, uh, well, move forward in your desires and your dreams and also maybe uh, have a few people tag along. So uh, as we get into that, Adam, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. All right. Thanks, Rodney. Thanks for having me on Quad Radio. Um, so as we were talking, um, my, my story is a little different than, than a lot of racers. I didn't grow up racing. I grew up a uh, farm upstate New York. And then I joined the, the military um, and spent 20 years in the Air Force traveling around the world. Uh, so seldom had time to actually race or, or ride, actually. And as my military career kind of progressed and, and started coming to an end, um, I, I brought that that desire and that dream, if you will, of uh, racing for the first time in GNCC back to the forefront. And uh, my last year on active duty, I, I um, took my first race up in uh, Snowshoe in 2017. Uh, quickly got told what, how insane I was for showing up for my first race of snowshoe and quickly realized how insane I was for showing up. But it also, it kind of refocused and, and, and um, reset my goals, my priorities, uh, realized how unprepared I was, realized my, my quad wasn't set up right, my, my training and, and everything, I was doing everything wrong. Um, so over the next few years, um, my focus was essentially relearning the sport, relearning how to ride the quad, relearning how to set up the quad and do the mechanical work on the quad um, and also take care of myself you know there's one thing about you know make sure your quad's ready but if you can't show up week after week you know every two weeks um, especially at my age of you know upper 30s it's quite tough and uh, I'm sure there's others out there um, Stratton that can definitely support that one if, you know it's, it's tough showing up when when you're an old guy um, but finding the support was if you will intimidating you know, as a young guy in the C class novice, you think, you know, well, these vendors aren't going to look at you or n nobody's going to really help you. But as you start opening up and, and asking and figuring out, the the sport and the community is is very tight knit and, they, and it's there to help you. Um, so that's what I started doing over 20, this season, 2019. And just talking to vendors, different, different sport agencies like Casey Greek out of Impact Solutions. He's done amazing things about getting my shocks tuned in and, and helping me and teaching me um, how, to, how to work on those shocks trackside. Um, and then taking what I learned and then coupling it with some of my, you know, campsite buddies, um, taking what they learned, we realized, well, each of us independently, we were good, but together as a, as a team trackside, um, we were becoming better and we were, our GNCC growth was going up exponentially as opposed to just a steady state growth. Um, so that's where over the summer, um, Evo, um, Palavec and Marcus Pelusi and myself, we talked and that's where we came up with this prime racing concept and really the concept simple is just take what we had independently molded in collectively as a race team, our support or our sponsorship and, uh, and then provide it to others, whether it's trackside help on, um, or support or teaching them how to write, right? Race resumes. Um, so the whole gamut. And of course, we're learning ourselves every day. But that was the brainchild or the concept behind Prime Racing. So we just launched it um, actually a couple of weeks ago officially on social media uh, to our, our public. Um, you know that, that we're combined now. We're, we're under one umbrella of Prime Racing, and you know we're as you said we're working through the twenty prepping for twenty twenty with the sponsors and the sport agencies to to get on board. Um, for, for the 2020 season under that umbrella of prime racing and, and helping the novice and the youth riders and, and, and ourselves as kind of like a library of information or, or whatever, um, you know, provided to those guys and, and hopefully advance them up into the amateur or someday the XC1, XC2 rankings as far as we can go. As the old guys like myself, we realize uh, I'm never going to line up on the XC1 row. 
um, at 39 years old, but there's nothing saying that I can't help somebody get to that XC, XC1 row someday. And that's kind of the hope and the, the desire behind prime racing. Well, I, I think that's a, a great uh, desire. Um, you know, I think it's great that uh, you uh, realize that you, maybe your dream or hopes of being an XC1 guy, maybe you never had those hopes, but there are people out there that just don't know how uh, to step in. Um, and it, and it, it can be very intimidating. And, and that's one thing that, you know, I, I think uh, that, that we might ought to touch on. Um, but, uh, uh, Adam, um, yeah, let's talk about it. I mean, yourself talk about the intimidation factor. I mean, here you are, uh, you were 30, what, seven years old whenever you came to uh, snowshoe GNCC. And I, I'm assuming that is your first ever GNCC, uh, off-road race period, or was that just your first GNCC? That was my first race ever, Rodney. Um, up to that <laughs> point, I just done wreck riding in the backwoods. So, uh, that was first race. And that's the neat and interesting thing about now choosing snowshoe to do your first ever race uh, might be a bit of a, a, a task, which you found out, obviously. It didn't scare you off. That, that's the cool thing about it. But, uh, you know, that's the neat thing about GNCC. You know, we talk about the upper tier level of riders of the XC1 and the XC2 and those riders that are they're working their way through the ranks. Um, you know, some people don't realize that you can go that's the beauty of the national program of the, the gncc you can literally start your racing career there i mean uh you might want to start locally and get uh uh you know uh, acquainted with the idea of what racing is and things of that nature but um if you don't and you just happen you know you don't know where to go and you know a gncc's in town and you're like by god i want to go race that's the beauty of a gncc i mean uh, anybody can go and, and, and race. I mean, uh, every level of rider that you can think of is, um, uh, is, is afforded an opportunity. I think there, Adam, starting with the youth, like you said, you know, you work from, they got, uh, they got uh, 50 CCs, uh, both motorcycle and ATVs, uh, to the, you know, right on up through the four fifties and, and the bigger machines. I mean, it, it, it's, I think a great platform and a great opportunity and some people may get, be a little intimidated by, by that fact. Now, personally, I would suggest going and getting your feet wet at a local race first, but if you're one of those folks like Adam, heck man, just grab the bull by the horns and go make it happen. So uh, obviously uh, you, you talked to uh, Adam that this was a desire of yours for many years while uh, you were in, uh, the Air Force. Talk, talk to me about how you were first acquainted with off-road racing, maybe GNCC in particular, and, and how that dream, I guess that, that seed got planted for this dream to, to actually be dreamed. I uh, really started as a young kid reading Dirt Wheels magazine. I mean, um, like I said, I grew up on the farm, so I was always exposed to whether it was an ATV or snowmobile or, you know, something with the motor. And, um, you know, there's many summers where we just yank the mower deck off of a lawnmower and turn that into a little go-kart. So <laughs> I've always been into, you know, the motorized side of um, things, if you will. And uh, reading the Dirt Wheels magazine, um, that's where the, the seed was kind of planted and, and learning about the different races that were available, you know, whether it was West Coast or East Coast racing and uh, the quads mainly was always my um, passion. Um, and then, like I said, from there, kind of worked up towards it. Of course, racing is not cheap. Owning your own machines isn't cheap. So as a young guy coming in the Air Force, um, you know, that was definitely not a, a priority at that time for the bills. Um, so I had to, and then after, after a while, it, it just, you know, work in the military is, is your focus because um, we are very busy. So it took a while to kind of get that back to where it could be um, an option, if you will. Um, and actually, it wasn't until 2007, I think, when I bought my first bike, and you know, I still that's bike I still race on. So I, I race, as people say, a dinosaur, uh, <laughs> but it, it works great and, and it holds up great. Um, so, uh, but then I again got deployed, got moved around the world again, so I had to put it on pause again. And then 2017, ten years later, almost after buying the bike, uh, was wow. when I launched it for the first time. Wow. Well, kept that, kept it in there. And uh, I, I imagine the thing runs like it did when it was brand. It basically was a brand new machine because you hadn't ridden it much, I guess, huh? Right. right. 
<laughs> so interesting uh the technology has it changed a whole lot that you found or anything like that with the older machine it has um of course i'm running uh, the car model um, it's a little more challenging now in 2019 to find the support um the folks who remember how to actually jet a car and <laughs> will, will help you out and of course every time i show up to a lot of shops it's you know they're always trying to twist my arm and they're buying the, the newer bikes and tell me how easy it is but you know i i know it now and that's what i like so i stick with it um so it, it's been a little challenging but the it, the sport's still there the vendors still make parts for the if you will the dinosaur bikes and uh, it's there you can do it no doubt no doubt now uh tell me uh where you, where you live where are you from uh what region of the u.s do you inhabit i guess uh i i ended up settling in uh, virginia around uh richmond area virginia but kind of right in the middle of the circuit. So I worked on my career. So you were a New York boy. Is that what you were saying in the beginning? And you ended up in Virginia. That's a big difference there, man. <laughs> as you get older, you also don't um, enjoy shoveling snow as much. Right. So my last duty station was in Virginia. Um, and I was, I was stationed there in 2011. And when I retired in um, 2018, it, it just had become home. And right. I decided to stay there. and going back to the negative 30 degrees or, you know, blizzards of New York didn't sound fun anymore. Yeah, and you get a chance to visit whenever you go GNCC racing a couple of times, right? <laughs> yeah. well, that's the blast having the family come out and watch it. That's awesome. Uh, Adam, th that's great, man. And I think it's a great story and uh, I love where we are with this and see the, the neat thing about that is there are a lot of people probably in your shoes, you know, that, did exactly what you did, read dirt wheels, maybe followed it on the internet, maybe follow uh, racing on Facebook and t Instagram and Twitter and all that. And, and you're itching and you're hungry and you want to get out there and you feel a little overwhelmed by the reality of it. But uh, the beauty of it is, man, it's not nearly as overwhelming as what you th think it possibly can be, especially whenever you've got people like you out there that have paved the way and uh, uh, know what's going on. And the great thing about today's technology is you can offer a voice out there for people to uh, uh, help uh, pave that way for them. And I'll tell you what, we'll talk a little bit more about that, about the program that you're building and the direction that we're heading a little more in detail uh, coming up here in just a few moments. But right now, let's take a quick break and say thanks to those that uh, support Quad Radio. And uh, please, support them as well. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joel Jansen from Jansen Motorsports. We've been building quads for over 25 years, and now we have stepped up our engine program to a whole new level with five axis CNC heads available. Please contact us for details at 920-766-3411. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Stephanie from JSR Moto Designs. JSR Moto Designs specializes in replacement Nerf bar nets for all makes and models that can be fully customizable to your needs. Our custom apparel can be specifically designed for your race team. We can help make what you wear personal on and off the track, including embroidered or printed hoodies, jackets, t-shirts, hats, jersey lettering, butt patches, and more. Check us out at jsrmotodesigns.com or find us on Facebook and Instagram. BNR Motorsports, racing engines and suspension is a family owned business with over 15 years experience working on motorcycles, ATVs, dirt bikes, side by sides and snowmobiles. BNR Motorsports strives to provide the best customer service, products and prices. Check out their website at bnrmotorsports.com and find an extensive inventory of parts for the YZ450RX, the Raptor 125, the Can-Am and Can-Am side by sides, wheels and parts and shocks, shock parts and springs and more. That's BNR Motorsports Hi, I'm Walker Fowler, and this is a DP brake rotor, and these are DP brake pads. Hmm. <laughs> Larry Mills and DP brakes have been a part of my program for over a decade. Recently, we completed the Heartland Challenge, a 10-hour ATV endurance race that is not only physically demanding, but demanding on my machine and my parts. And that is why we choose DP brake pads. At the end of the race, we had zero brake failures, and they looked brand new. If you aren't using DP brakes, what's stopping you? Literally. 
And welcome back to Quad Radio, as today we talk with uh, Adam Wells from uh, Team Prime as we get uh, set for the uh, 2020 season on his end of things and uh, kind of uh, pave the way for uh, new blood in the GNCC Racing Nation. Adam, uh, again, a retired uh, Air Force, uh, uh, I, I don't know what your, what was your ranking in the Air Force again? Uh, it was Senior Master Sergeant E8. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> that, that, that that eight thing uh, on the end of it says a whole lot of it to me. So you, you spend a lot of time in there. Uh, again, you know, as we talked personally on the phone uh, yesterday, I, I do want to, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, echo my uh, uh, excitement uh, of what your bravery has done for us in helping uh, keep America free, uh, not only you, but all military men and women that uh, sacrifice uh, so much, put their lives on the line they, uh, every day uh, to make sure that this country is free. So thank you for, for being a part of that, Adam. And thank you for being a part of the GNCC Race and Nation as uh, we get set to roll. So uh, here we are. We talked about it a little bit ago. Uh, you know, you're fresh, you're new. You, you, you know, this is just something that you've always desired and wanted to do. And Heck with it. I'm going to snowshoe GNCC. First and foremost, I, I got to ask you, what in the world would possess you to choose snowshoe as your very first race? What is it just the way the calendar worked out after retirement and it just happened to be a roll of the dice? Or did you say, that's the one that I'm going to? I'm going to get a big taste of what it's really like right off the bat. It was a combination of that. I was coming off a of deployment in uh, 2017. So time, I got home um, in April. So I missed the whole first part. And uh, during the deployments where I really focused on my training, research of the NCC and the quad, and then um, ordering the parts. So I came home to uh, a garage full of boxes and parts that I had to get the quad ready. Um, and GNC and Snowshoe, of course, being in Virginia, it was kind of a lo my most local race. Um, and June was a perfect time. It gave me enough time to get the quad ready. And reading it is um, reading the, the blogs and the sites, you know, it says it's one of the most difficult. So you know, thought processes, might as well see what the hardest one is and everything else is easy after that. <laughs> and it is definitely the most, one of the most difficult races. doesn't matter about conditions. It's snowshoe, snowshoe. It's a challenge. There's no doubt about, but every race has its challenges. You found out being out there, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, it does every race. And it, it's every race is situational based on mother nature. And that's what you learn as you're coming through the ranks. You know, one race track might be perfect one year. The next year, Mother Nature might open up and make it the most miserable race you've done. No, oh, uh, isn't that the true? Or uh, halfway through the race, uh, things might change. <laughs> <laughs> and we've seen that this year, too. <laughs> yes, we have. No doubt about it. So um, let's talk a little bit about it. So um, uh, about your racing in particular. Tell me about your season. I understand you're injured, but uh, how was your season going? I mean, from a novice standpoint, uh, you know, you're a beginner rider. You've got very little true racing experience under your belt, uh, but you're gaining it with each and every time. So tell me about your season and uh, how it all, you know, because it sounds like you had a very fruitful season up until then. You, you, you made friends. Uh, you uh, really got acquainted with uh, – some tracks, some locations, uh, the, the weather, <laughs> you know, all the differences that, 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 they, that things. So, I mean, it sounds like you, you, you've got a really good experience so far in the short amount of time that you've really had to race. So tell me about it. Uh, 2019 has been a blast. I, I, up to probably the first half of 2019, it, it's still been a lot of learning, uh, a lot of part swap now, trying different things. So 2018, I, I made a change to, my program and i decided to try the twist throttle for the first time and and uh give that a shot and i rode with it for um all of 2018 um, had some real close calls realized that that wasn't good for my program so i switched back of course the conditioning was a lot different at that point so it, it started rough in 2019 um just readjusting the body and the muscles and, and the, the way to ride the quad again um so worked up through through some of those challenges you know and then started, I guess it was Camp Coker was kind of, if you will, my, my breakthrough race. That's where I finally placed top five um, and kind of that sparked my program, if you will. That, uh, and what class is this again? This is C, 35 plus. Um, so that really sparked kind of re, re, 
put some life back into my program where I got excited again. And, and I realized there could be a chance out there. And then um, it just happened to be Larry Mills put out there. He's looking, you know, sponsorship applications. I'm like, well, let me see. Let me give it a shot. DP Briggs, uh, right? <laughs> DP Briggs. I sent it off. And sure enough, Larry is one of the best supporters out there for all the racers. So sent it off. And within a day, I had the response back. And I realized it was a potential and it, and it could be done. So then I started focusing on learning that side of it. And, and uh, the conditioning started growing, um, came into snowshoe 2019. And that was actually the first race I won. So kind of poetic, my first race ever and my first wow. race off snowshoe. Um, there was a lot of challenges during it, lost my front brakes, wasn't a good race at all. Just kind of had to trudge on through. Um, and kept that momentum going into the summer and really focused down on building my support team. And um, Drew Landers put it out on his social media over the summer. Um, he offered up some riding time and riding coaching and jumped right on that. And he had me out to his place, uh, kind of taught me some of the bad things I was doing and helped me through some of those tricks. And I'm still working on those. So huge thanks to Drew and Lane, Lane's Mill XC. And it just, it just started started flowing, you know, it's it kind of like, you know, push the, the snowball off the hill and it just started rolling faster and faster and faster. And then that's our friendship, you know, trackside friendship grew into the race team because um, we all have the same vision and desire of you know, not only helping ourselves, but we help anybody, adjacent racers, adjacent race team, if somebody needs help. And that's part of the GNCC, you help each other out. Um, so we decided to start giving back where, where we were given those opportunities. Um, so then, like you said, uh, I got, I got through black sky and then during the training ride, um, you know, a little bit happened and ended up messing on my shoulder. So season came to a, a premature end, unfortunately. Um, but it, it had, it, I got my goals met. I did minimum nine races. So I achieved everything I needed to do for this year. Um, got a, got a top five plus ranking. And uh, so it set me up well for the 2020 season and where we can go into 2020 season, um, still growing our race team and, and uh, making that go. Awesome. Awesome. And, and, and the beauty of it, I mean, just like you were talking about Drew Landers there from uh, Lands Mill XC, a great guy. Uh, no doubt about it. This kid is an up and comer, hard worker, very talented, very dedicated. Uh, and uh, definitely one of the top tier in our sport. Uh, amazing. Uh, how easy it is to talk to people. I, I realize, you know, he was, he was offering a writing clinic and things like that, but he, even off out of that realm, I mean, how easy he is to go up and talk to. Uh, you mentioned when we were talking on the phone yesterday, Adam McGill, uh, you talked about uh, uh, Mark Notman at, uh, at Walker Fowler Racing and Walker Fowler and how, you know, just, you know, how you became acquainted with them and how you realized real fast they are just normal people like us all. They have the same desires and same passions, just at a different level, I guess, huh? Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, there's not a race goes by where you don't see, uh, as he's referred to, the mustache or um, Mark McGill <laughs> out, there, out there with C-class riders giving out fist bumps and helping each other out. And, yeah, it, just I guess for me it just came to the point where I just realized just ask. I mean – like you said, they're just people. If they say, if they're too busy and they say no, they say no. But I've received trackside help from Walker Fowler Racing Team where they helped me troubleshoot a, a breakdown, a quad. Um, Jeff and Tracy Pickens helped me out with some tuning over, over, over social media this summer. I mean, the help is there and you just got to ask. Um, of course, they're busy. They're, they have a job and they have families and they, they're trying to do their business too. So sometimes you're going to get a no and, and that's fine. But most of the time, each one of the, the racers want the sport to, to succeed, and they want to help us move up through the ranks, all, all of us. All right. We've talked about the, uh, the program that, that you're setting up. I, again, this is something that is geared toward the novice and youth, the beginner type person that is getting acquainted uh, to racing. But tell me about this program, what, uh, you know, what the goals are and what we're going to do to achieve this and how – if you're ready for people to, you know, start hitting you up, uh, you know, what, what they, how they can get a hold of you to, to talk to you about how, hey, how can I do what you're doing? How can I be involved? How can I be a part of something like this? 
So the, the focus of the team, like you said, is, and like we said, is um, kind of just providing whatever's been provided to us in support. And it, the, the focus is really in the novice, um, the youth, the micro, the range, but anybody. I mean, it, we all have um, lessons to learn. It doesn't matter if you're an XC1 guy or a back row guy. Everybody has lessons to learn. And so it's just providing the resources that we've provided and, and helping guys move through that. So, yeah, our, our team's ready. We're still working through some of the social media stuff. Um, we launched it on Facebook, and we're still growing that and, and trying to merge our individual race teams out there. But really, so what, what is? What, can we search it on Facebook? What is it under? Yeah, it's um, Prime, all caps, Prime Racing, um, and, and that's a, the race team. And we're going to be uh, we're working through the Instagram and the other social media outlets, um, so you can search it there. Um, and our so we're starting small. So 2020, one of our plans as a race team is we're going to sponsor a novice and or youth rider to one of the camps. And we still got to work with the details out on that before we launch it. But that will eventually be launched out on social media and how you can enter for the drawing to win that. But it's going to be focused really on the novice riders or, or the youth riders and hopefully one of each uh, to get them to either the um, action off road camp or one of the many camps out there. Um, and that'd be, you know, where we sponsor the entry fee. Uh, of course, you would have to still get yourself there and get your father. there. But it's, it's again, just to try to help riders um, get their foot in the door, kind of learn some of the stuff that took us years to learn um, a little bit quicker and feel like they can advance and feel like they can actually come out here and ride the race. Exactly. And, and the one thing that we want people to understand is that you're not like offering people like, Hey, we're going to get all this stuff for you and come and ride for us. This, that, and what you're doing is you're offering an Avenue, an easier road to a great program and, and hopefully a new lifestyle for you. If you've never been involved in it. Yes. Yes. And that, that's it. Um, of course there are some vendors out there that will, that allow us to offer our, our sponsorship or our abilities to provide parts and whatnot. Uh, and that, that kind of helps out with them also. Um, and then the ability to kind of, I mean, when you're first getting into the sport researching, what's the best shock, what's the best way to set up your quad? What's the best, I mean, every, every site you go to says the best shock is this, whatever it is. So, um, and it, it's a lot of money. It's daunting getting into it. And it's kind of scary. So you start researching the front row guys and you start, so it's kind of just sporadic. So we also, um, during Black Sky, we had a young rider. It was his first race ever. His quad broke down. He couldn't get it riding. We had an extra quad. We set him up, got him riding, got him out there on the front on the in his first race, and he finished up the lap. And he was so excited just to finish that lap on his first ride. It wasn't on his quad. It was on one of our quads. But that's the the point of the team is you know whatever you, you whatever we have that we can give back. That's great. And to share any sponsorship opportunities. And I think if there are any sponsors out there that, that see this and say, Hey, this is a great opportunity. We'd like to be involved in, it. I know like Larry Mills from DP breaks, you know, like you said, man, I mean, he, uh, uh, unbelievable kind of support that DP throws out there, uh, to the riders and to the racers and, you know, at all levels, uh, you know, I mean, obviously they, they can't give all their product away all the time and, and things like that. But the support that, that everybody that throws out there is uh, unbelievable. I mean, uh, really appreciate what everybody does. Uh, DP breaks, uh, you know, I don't know why they, they stand out. You know, it, it's funny. You don't see DP breaks as a sponsor of the series, but I think they sp basically support the series through sponsoring every rider out there on the, <laughs> on the racetrack almost, you know, I, I love, I love the concept that the, the DP does, you know, they're not out there in your face with banners everywhere. Not that, they shouldn't be because I believe they should be, but they're a small growing company like everyone else. And, uh, so great. And, uh, you know, and, and like you said, you know, I, I think it's really cool. Casey Greek's a real good friend of mine. Impact solutions, uh, is a very big supporter of what we got going on here. Jay Goble, uh, has been on with quad radio since day one. Um, and those are the types of people that you deal with. You know, I, I deal with them through the industry, but what is remarkable to me, not only are they open arms to me and trying to help grow the sport and things like that, but, uh, to someone like you, a total stranger walks up and says, Hey man, I got a problem. And you know, it, they're there. I mean, you know, they'll give, I mean, you know, Casey sometimes can look at you and give you a, 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 a smart a answer that you're like, What's he trying to say here? But then all of a sudden you think about it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. You know, Casey's absolutely right. You know, I mean, and, and I love 
I love Casey's personality. Uh, I love his intelligence. He, he has been uh, through this industry uh, on a lot of different levels, and that man has acquired knowledge that uh, many people in our ATV racing industry will never acquire. <laughs> you're, you're exactly right. And it, he was the one who really, besides Larry, he was really the second one who really started to help out and, of course, sent my shocks to him first time and, and decided to give him a phone call and just talk to him outside of basic servicing and said, Casey, you know, this is what happened in 2018. And within, you know, a 30 minute conversation, he had enough information to reset my, my shock for 2019. Showed up to Florida, of course, Florida beat you up anyways, Florida is miserable. Um, but from then on, I haven't touched them. They have been set up perfectly. So we're working into the 2020 season for my setup and I won't trust my shocks or my setup. And I've even expanded it. He, he's done my, cause he's also with CST tires and tire balls and, I trust him with pretty much everything below the motor. And Casey is, you don't have to be that front row guy to get that support from Casey. And that's what I love about it. And it's on time. I've never missed a race, even though I've had to send him off with, hey, man, I need these in a, in a week. Can you do it? He gets it out. So you're treated just like XC1 riders with Casey Greek and Impact Solution. Exactly. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Uh, uh, that, that, to me, it's amazing the the business pattern that they got, but you know where that comes from. I don't know if you know Jay Goble, the owner of Impact Solutions. Uh, Jay was someone similar to you at one time in his life as a young man. I mean, uh, you know, he grew up over in the uh, Marietta, Ohio uh, area. You know, over in that Parkersburg, West Virginia area, and uh, you know, the, the racing was all around that area. You know, and he he got the bug just like you. He was new at it at one time never gone to a race but he went and he started going look where he's at today i mean he's uh, a part of a woven part of the uh, fabric of off-road racing and gncc and atv motocross there's no doubt about it he's brought great people into the program uh, uh like uh digital dave i don't know if you know dave and uh, he, he works a little bit with maxis and then of course uh you know obviously casey just his unparalleled knowledge of everything about racing whether it be two or four wheels that's the beauty of it i mean casey's knowledgeable in both two and four wheels i mean we put a lot of pressure on him for the four wheel side of things but hey this guy is a motor man he's a uh, shock man i mean uh, he's just a, a race man i mean he is somebody good good to know and have in your corner uh that's that's for sure and and, and i'm Sorry, Casey, that, you know, we're stroking you like that, man, but thank you for everything you do for our sport. Thank you, Jay Goble, for everything that you do for our sport uh, through Impact Solutions and just your knowledge of being around. Uh, Adam, uh, I know we're running short on time here. How can folks get a hold of you? Talk a little bit more about it. Uh, ease their minds about it. You know, maybe be a part of what you're doing. Uh, maybe not be a part of it. Are you going to be coming at, to any of the – well, I guess, are you coming to any more races this year? We got – coming up this weekend, obviously, we're going to be – at uh, the scout camp down in West Virginia, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, then we've got, uh, I guess, doggone, just what, one more after that? Uh, Iron Man? <laughs> I can't yeah. believe. Are you going to be to the next two races? I personally will not be, but that's also the nice thing with Prime Racing with the, my partner, Eva and Marcus. The, the team will be represented there. And we always, social media is always available. Prime Racing, you can hit me up on my personal um, social media account. Um, reach out, ask questions. Um, every race we're helping somebody, you know, get, it could be just, Hey, how do I get to tech inspect? Where do I get, you know, how do I go through that? Um, so the team will always be represented there. Um, we're working on making more of a, a fit. We're working with some sponsors to make more of an official looking pit, nice pit. So um, we can actually direct people, you know, check out, you know, this, this tent and find us here. Um, we we're not there yet. Um, so I can't really say that. So social media is the best way to reach out to us. And then, uh, most likely we'll tell you how to find us at the racetrack. If you need track side support or just, you know, some social media, up, um, help. Awesome, man. Ambassadors, uh, great ambassadors of, uh, the, uh, uh, beginning racers, I guess you could say in the GNCC racing in general, because, uh, I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, you know, uh, from a standpoint of working, uh, with, uh, racer productions and GNCC appreciate it from that standpoint, from a standpoint of, uh, personally at quad radio appreciate what you're doing to help uh, uh, grow the sport in what way you can and, and introduce it to, to new people and bring new people into the sport those are the kind of things 
that we need to uh, keep this sport growing, keep it alive as much as anything, because Adam, like we know, uh, right now, the Yamaha is the only one actually producing an ATV. I'm not saying that there won't be another step up in the next year or two, uh, but uh, hopefully there will be, and we'll, we'll see a lot more growth in the future, especially with the economy and things the way that it is right now. But uh, thanks for everything that you're doing. Thanks for being a part of Thanks for having that passion, man. Uh, uh, and thanks for being uh, where you are in life uh, for those uh, 20 years that you spent in the military too, man. That means a lot. Thank you, Ronnie. Any parting shots that you may want to send out to the uh, folks out in Quad Radio land? I would just like to thank the sponsors, of course, the guys who support us, um, Wisco Pistons, Impact Solution, DP Brake, Evans Cooling, uh, IMS Lyette, e EVS, Twin Air, O'Neill, um, Sunstar, uh, list goes on, on ODI, Amsoil, um, Brain Fitness, Gabe Auto Corps and Spirit Tire and Auto, and there, there's a few others, but those are the main ones that are really helping the, the team and, and see the same vision of, of uh, not just helping us, but letting us help others. Well, I hope to see your vision come to fruition, man. Uh, good luck to you, Adam. Appreciate what you're doing, like we said, man. All right. Thank you, Rodney. That's Adam Wells. I'm Rodney Tomlin, and this is Quad Radio.